Back at it, man. Back on our bullshit, so it must be Friday. Happy to fucking be here, as always. 20 seconds, already said fuck twice. Make that three times. Good ratio. <laughs> Fantastic. Man, it's, a uh... Man, first, uh, shit, is this the first... This is the first one of the whole, uh, of the year. This is the first one of the new year. First, uh... First podcast of 2024. Didn't even fucking think about that. But, uh, happy new year. Hope everybody had a great Christmas, a great holiday, whatever you were doing. Um, I had a great Christmas and a great New Year's. Excuse me. I had to burp there. Um, yeah, man. I had a good, uh, good Christmas and good New Year and kind of, uh, yeah, I was... Real excited getting my shit uh, prepared for the new year and just uh, thinking about all the possibilities and stuff is exciting. And then as soon as the new year happens and you wake up, you're like, holy shit. And it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot at once. But hey, man, it's uh, it's been good. It's been good since then. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a new year. It's crazy to think how much time is actually left in the year. Um like 300 uh about 360 days, I believe. Man, I'll stop fucking around though. Um next week, uh next week I will be a very different episode. Uh episode 35 uh will be with my buddy, my good buddy, long-time buddy uh Andrew Green. Yeah, I if you if you know me then you uh then uh, there's a good chance that you know about my buddy Andrew. He's a great dude. Uh, real excited to sit down and and talk to him. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll have fun. Don't expect it to be uh, an intellectual ass conversation. He's a really smart guy, but you know we uh, we have some we have a good time. So we we talk a lot about we talk about a lot of stupid shit, and we have a good time. So I feel like that's fitting for a podcast versus uh you know. We've had this will be thirty four straight episodes of me talking my stupid shit. So Andrew, uh, it's very fitting that Andrew gets to uh gets to be the first guest. It'll be a good time. But yeah, we'll be talking shit. We'll talk baseball, but we mostly be talking shit, talking about whatever the hell comes up. But uh, yeah, I had a had a good time catching up with him uh, a week or so ago. And yeah, man, it's a uh, new year. Time to talk about some fucking baseball, I guess. So the Dodgers have spent a fuck ton of money this offseason. Yes and no, because of Shohei's massively deferred contract, but, you know, whatever. Um, they got Yoshinobu Yamamoto, uh, the second most coveted free agent of the offseason. They got him. Uh, they got Tyler Glass now. Traded him. Traded for him. And then signed him to an extension. Hopefully he stays healthy. Um, and they're they're definitely not done. They'll be getting some more guys. Um, nobody's going to be surprised if they get another big name for some reason. Um, there's still a lot of good free agents out there, but they've uh, they've spent a ton of money. They're in a different uh, a different category. And I learned something today that kind of explains that why they're in an entirely different category. I always just assumed that, you know, I always just chalked it up to the city of Los Angeles, you know, been there, moving there. I always just chalked it up to the city being what it is with the massive population that they can guarantee that attendance every game, no matter what, even if the Dodgers are losing by the fifth inning and half the stadium leaves, they still got all those asses in seats, you know. So, and everybody's got to drive there pretty much. I, I don't know of alternate ways. I'm sure there are alternate ways. There's got to be. But uh, it's a just a big-ass parking lot, and the stadium's separated from everything. So I honestly just chalked it up to that um, as to why they were, uh, you know, the financial powerhouse that they are. And I didn't really think much past that. But I learned today that in 2013, and uh, credit to a sports storm on YouTube, uh, who uh, made a YouTube video talking about the Dodgers, who goes in, into depth into a lot of things. Uh, he does a great job in that video, really, really informative. So in 2013, the Dodgers signed a 25-year, 
billion with a B dollar deal with Time Warner Cable for their TV rights. So that's a 25-year deal that was signed in 2013, $8.35 billion. You do the math if you want to. I'm not a fucking math major. We don't do math on this show. <laughs> but I apparently that, that was $196 million in revenue in 2022, just from the TV shit. And from what I understand, after the, the ownership changed hands in 2012, new ownership group, and they were able to use the, the leverage of Los Angeles to get that fucking TV deal, $8.35 billion. That is fucking crazy. Uh, that is some crazy shit. So, and that's just the TV. So keep that in mind. That is just the TV rights. So imagine how my mind was expanded after, you know, just assuming, you know, me me just being blissfully ignorant to how money works, I guess. Like, I don't know. I don't know what you want from me. I don't think much about it. I've always known the Dodgers are the richest fucking team, but this was kind of a bomb dropped on me today before I recorded this shit. So 25 years, $8.35 billion is their TV deal. And so that explains even more so why they have infinite money and they can do whatever the fuck they want. Nobody's surprised. I don't even hate it. And and I was thinking, I don't know how many World Series you have to win to quote-unquote justify the Shohei contract and all of this that's going on right now, but apparently they want to they wanna create some... They want to do some crazy shit. Uh, apparently the... I don't remember if it was the president of baseball operations or what, but I think it was Andrew Friedman uh, with the Dodgers who said something along the lines of they want this to be remembered as a golden era in baseball, um, which it fucking definitely can be because Freddie Freeman, Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani, that's fucking crazy. Add in Tyler Glass now, Yoshinobu, Yamamoto as well. Those are five fucking superstars at their ceiling there isn't one for those guys Tyler Glass now say what you want um I probably wouldn't argue with you he's been injured apparently has not thrown more than 120 innings in a season uh that's probably an issue too but that dude is fucking good um he can win a Cy Young for sure they also got Will Smith Max Muncy Bobby Miller they've they've got dudes so it's possible you know, look back to the Yankees when they won a bunch in a row. You know, back when the, back during the times that nobody fucking remembers, because it was forever ago. Uh, but yeah, you know, yeah, I look back on those times with the Yankees and and all those greats, and I I do think of that as a golden era of baseball. So, who are we to fault for the, Who are we to fault the fucking Dodgers for for going for it? They said they wanted to go for it. They are. I am incredibly curious to see how their season goes. I mean, I'm sure they'll win 100 games in the uh, in the regular season unless things go terribly wrong for no reason. You know, this isn't the fucking NBA where you put three superstars together and it still falls apart more than half the time. Be fucking real. You know that's what happens. Baseball, very different. Entirely different game, you know? Entirely different game. The Dodgers are fucking doing it. At the same time, it doesn't guarantee a fucking thing. In my opinion, it doesn't guarantee a fucking thing. I was thinking about it, and I was trying to convince myself that it's possible that they won't win one. That they, I was trying to think, like, what could happen that could lead to them going the entire Shohei contract without winning a World Series? Like, is it even possible? Like, with this team, is that even... I don't think so. There's, I, there's no way... But I, I also think, you know, there's never anything guaranteed in baseball, right? There's never anything guaranteed. The Diamondbacks just made it to the World Series. Their payroll was uh, was 20th out of 30 last year. It doesn't always uh, it doesn't always translate. Now the Rangers won the World Series, pretty expensive team. Same with the Astros, same with the Braves. All strong franchises spending money. 
they want to win. The Dodgers have leaped over those teams in uh, in in a whole different fucking way with this. But I, with the way that baseball is, though, I I view it as the most unpredictable game, and with 162 games in a season, the playoffs are long. It's a long year. I don't know. I think they they've got to win at least. I mean, I think two. Two would be a good guarantee. Like two World Series in 10 years, I would feel really good about betting on that. Weirdly enough, oh shit, my bad. Weirdly enough, three seems like, I feel like if they won three in 10 years, then that needs to be acknowledged as as fantastic. Like that is like incredibly great. I feel like if you win three, you know, I like the Hollywood fucking rule. Everything's a trilogy now. I'm pretty sure the Giants won three in a short amount of time. I could be wrong. Um, but I feel like, you know, you get three in 10 years. That's a damn good run. Uh, the Cardinals won in 2006. And I, I can speak for my lifetime, but the Cardinals won in 2006. They won in 2011. And then they lost in 2013. And so that's, you know, that's three three World Series appearances just for my lifetime so far. I'm 24. So within 25 years, that was three just World Series appearances. And that was from the Cardinals, you know. So take it as you may. The Dodgers have had these owners since uh, since 2012. So I guess you could really count this Dodger this Dodger era of baseball from then to to present, right? And so the Dodgers, they've appeared in multiple World Series, but they've only won once, and that was in 2020 in the shortened season. I don't devalue that at all. I really don't. Um, a World Series is a World Series. I don't really devalue the Lakers championship either. It's like, who gives a shit? It's still, you still have to beat the best teams. You know, it doesn't, you guys are in the same circumstances. It doesn't matter. Also, both LA teams won that year. So I don't know what the fuck that's supposed to mean, but that's what happened. And the Mets last year, apparently the Mets are still going to have the highest payroll this year. Apparently that's what's expected. They might not fucking suck too bad. I saw them get Harrison Bader. That's exciting. He gets to stay in New York. My bad. I keep. I'm playing with the. Uh, I'm playing with the top to this candle. I'm fucking around with it. But uh, Harrison Bader gets to stay in New York. That's pretty cool. His stylish ass. I'm sure he'll enjoy himself. That's badass, man. He'll get to grow his hair out again if he wants to. That'll be sick in the Mets uniform, in the Big Apple. I think that's exciting. I think Cardinal fans will will enjoy it. It'll be fun. But they spent the most money. The Mets will still be the still have the highest payroll, I guess, this upcoming season, which I thought that that wasn't going to happen, but I they might still be paying Verlander and Scherzer. That might be part of what's fucking them. I'm not sure. But you know, the Orioles they are expected to be 29th out of 30 in payroll next year. And they won 101 games this past season. Won the division, got fucked in the playoffs, but they're a young team. They'll be back. But they came out of nowhere, won 101 games this fucking season. I don't think that's a fluke. They've got a lot of really good young players. And they were 29th. Only the Oakland A's, the team that is moving to Vegas because of a rich asshole, have a more, more cheaper payroll, have a cheaper payroll. English, Adam. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but they're 29th and they won 101 games. The Tampa Bay Rays, they've always been cheap fucks. They're 27th in payroll. They won 99 games last year. They won 100 plus uh, the year before. I have a feeling the Rays might might start trending downward, weirdly. They're getting a new ballpark, but I don't know. I've got a weird feeling. They don't spend a lot of money. I think there might be some... I'm, I'm scared of a Wander Franco curse. This sick bastard. I don't know. I saw they got him, but I, it's so damn unfair to the <laughs> to the Rays. How they they had no idea. How can you fucking? Ugh, Jesus. 
Yeah, apparently pedophile Wander Franco finally got locked up, so that's good. But, uh, man, fuck. They don't give out any big contracts forever, and they get Wander Franco. He was on my, my side bitch fantasy team, too. He was on my second fantasy team that I was less invested in. He was on the Muddy Monsters. He was a big part of my team's success for a lot of the year, and then he was fucking gone because he's a fucking freak. So I hope the Rays will be all right. I heard rumors. Oh, my God, I forgot the... Uh, I was going to say, I heard rumors they were going to trade Randy or Rosarena, and that immediately reminded me of the trade that happened today. So the Cardinals, they traded uh, Richie Palacios to the Rays for reliever Andrew Kittredge, uh, righty, I believe. He's uh, he's coming back from Tommy John surgery. He pitched in 14 games last year, had an ERA around like the low threes, I think. Um, that'll be nice. I think he'll be a solid bullpen arm. We fucking need that. Um, that's exciting. I wish I looked up how hard he throws. I don't, uh, I don't know, but he's a good, uh, good pitcher. I, I feel like Richie Palacios, he was a lot of fun to watch near the end of the year. Cardinals fans didn't have much, uh, much to be happy about, but Richie Palacios was a real bright spot. He ended up batting like 250, 258, something like that, I think. And, uh, he hit some home runs. He had some clutch at bats. He did some shit last year. Cardinals fans were loving it. I actually would have really loved to see him stay. Uh, I'm terrified he's going to fucking go nuts now. He's probably going to go to Tampa Bay and just wreck shit. Just like Randy did. Just like fucking Randy did, dude. We're probably fucked. It's probably going to happen, and it's going to be heartbreaking. And, I mean, it freed up the outfield a little bit. It's what had to happen. We we traded Tyler O'Neill too. Fuck. So we got rid of two outfielders, so... We've really cleared room at this point. I guess he would have been the guy to go. So, whatever. I get it. It. I feel that's going to hurt a little bit if he gets if he starts crushing shit. You know, I'll be happy for him. But I, I feel like he, I, it wouldn't have been out of the realm of possibility for him to still be on the roster. You know, he still could have earned a spot in spring training. He would have got that opportunity. I think he was just just the odd guy out. Um, it happens. But hopefully he'll get to get to get on the field more either way. But that happened today. That was fucking cool. Um, yeah, shit. Andrew will be on next week. I'm about uh I'm about wrapped up here. Yeah, shit. I think that's all I had. I've still been writing. Um, I yeah, it's weird. I I was really excited for the new year, you know. I went and had myself a good New Year's Eve and all that shit. And then, you know, you get back to work on the second and that all that shit hits you and you're just like, whoa. And it's like the entire year felt like it was in front of me and it was daunting, daunting for like a fucking day or so. And I'm just like, man, and I didn't really didn't really get much done, but I've since uh, since gotten through that part. And we're back on our bullshit just like normal. Comes and it goes as is life, you know, shit can't be perfect all the time. But I, I did think that was crazy because I was like, man, why am I so, why, why am I feel so, feel like there's so much when there really isn't, you know? I don't know how else to describe it, but it's like, oh, Jesus, what is, why? It's like, oh, just a, just the new year. There is a lot. There's a lot coming up, but that's okay. It'll be a good time. Again, I, yeah, I've, I've got no fucking complaints, man. I hope you enjoyed uh, enjoyed listening. If you're listening to this point, uh, yeah. Next episode, hashtag zero three five. First guest, Andrew motherfucking Green, future attorney, smart motherfucker, lifelong friend, great guy. It'll be a good time. So, yeah, I'll uh, I'm gonna try to get some work on uh, some scripts. Or at least a script. A script. Let me rephrase. I'll try to get work on a script done tonight. Maybe write some jokes. I'll still be going to do uh to do stand up sometime this month. I I've been writing writing some jokes, haven't been liking any of them, so that's been an issue. <laughs> but well I gotta do six. I I committed to it. I talked about it before. I'm gonna write about it. It's I gotta stop fucking with this candle thing. It's making noise. 
But um, yeah, I I got to write so uh, I got to write some comedy, get my ass on stage no matter what. Hey, six times I said I was doing it, so I got to do it. Have a great fucking weekend, man. Next week will be a fun one. This was a fun one. I appreciate you listening. I'm gone.